Today we have received this, the Miku Super, which is a super funky electric scooter. And we're going to do a full review. It's fair to say we're going to do things a little bit differently. Yes, in this video, we're going to bring you a full review, but we're going to do so in a commuter challenge. Quite typically, electric scooters and motorcycles are built for in-town and city use, just going on jaunts to the shops or to work, just a few miles here and there. So how better to test it than putting the Norfolk and Suffolk countryside doing a near 30 mile commute on a single charge. So for this one, I'm handing the reins over to Bike Matters newest member, Felix, to do that review and the challenge. Best of luck. All right. Good morning, Bike Matters fans. It's Felix, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. So it's a review, but we're going to be involving a challenge. So the challenge is whether or not I can make it to work on one full charge on the Sunra Miku Super. So basic bit of spec when it comes to the Miku, it's got two 72 volt batteries in there. On the rear wheel, we've got a three kilowatt motor hub. Um, on the front, we have a 270 mil disc with two piston caliper. And to the rear, we have a 190 mil disc with a single piston caliper. We have full LED lighting on this. Um, as you can see, it's a very cool headlight on the front. And we've got this nice panel work here with the LED logo on the side. We are currently in park mode, but I'll put it into ready mode. And we have three rider modes, which is one, two, and three. Mode one will keep, the, keep you limited to about 30 miles an hour. Mode two goes up to about 40 miles an hour. Mode three goes about to 50 miles an hour. We're gonna spend most of our time in mode two and attempt to save battery. So the seat height on this is 760 mil, so it's not that tall at all. I'm six foot, so for me, anything below sort of 800 mil is manageable, but the seat is quite narrow, so I don't think anyone's really gonna have a problem with this unless you're in the dwarf category. Um, but otherwise, I think everyone should get along quite well with this bike. So when it comes to suspension, we've just got some right way up forks, and on the rear we have uh, swing arm suspension. This is all non-adjustable. So with batteries in this, it has a total weight of 109 kilograms. There's no fluids here, so we're not gonna talk about a wet weight, just rather the batteries. Those individually weigh nine kilograms, and they are housed under here, but we'll demonstrate that back at the studio, how to take those out and stuff. So this bike's in the A1 category. Uh, it can be ridden on a CBT from the age of 17. Um, it's pretty cool for what it is. I don't think many 17 year olds will be coming across this price point and thinking, oh, that's for me. But at the same time, if you've got the money, this is quite a fun alternative to the combustion engines. So Sunra has a claimed 65 mile range. Um, we're really gonna be putting it to the test. I feel like that was done in mode one at very low speeds. Um, we're probably not gonna get anything near that with uh, sort of maintaining road speeds. I reckon we'll probably get to and from work I, I think it's doable i think we can make it so the charge time on this is four hours if you have both batteries charging on this point within the bike but if you take those batteries out it's four hours individually so we've got some nice 12 inch wheels they're small they're diddy it's always going to be small your center of gravity is a bit awkward on it but it's it holds its own it really does on the road it, it, you keep stuck to the road which is nice so the top speed is about 50 miles an hour in mode three. Uh, I don't think we'll get there today as we're gonna be sat in mode two, but we'll see how we get anyway, see how fast we can get. Maybe if we have enough charge on the way home, we can try mode three. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see guys. Remember, this is not a top speed challenge. This is a commuter challenge, whether or not I can make it to and from work. So I think a little bit of an awkward thing on this is it's got quite a tall side stand. Um, as you can see, the bike is quite vertical right now. Um, I'd have liked it to just be that little bit shorter so you can get it a bit more bedded into the ground, but it stays upright. It's just that fear of, it doesn't take much to knock it over that way, but it's not the end of the world. It's just one little niggle that I have. There's a pretty cool security system on this. I'll demonstrate it now. So switch it off. Uh, on this fob, you just have a lock and an unlock function. This can all be used with the app as well, but we're gonna demonstrate that in the studio as I am just seeing if we can make it to and from work. So it's obviously an electric vehicle, it's very quiet. Um, you need to make sure that you're getting full use out of your flashing full beam and your horn. It's gonna be important that you make sure you're seen. Uh, 
So this is priced at £3,500. I think it's a fair price point if you've got the money. I think most people at the, sort of the age 17 aren't going to be looking for this. But this is probably not aimed at that kind of person. I think it's aimed at more of the sort of city commuter, um, 20s, 30s, 40s. Someone who lives in the city and is just looking for some means of just getting to and from work, 5 to 10 miles every day plug it in at the office, whatever. I, yeah, I don't think this is sort of your 17 year old's dream. So yeah, guys, I think we'll go a bit more into spec in the studio, um, but for now, let's just see if we can do the challenge. All right, so the commuter challenge begins. 14 miles each way. I think we'll be able to do it. I'm gonna start in mode two. Don't panic me there. As you can see, 100% battery. Mode two, trip zero miles. I'm excited about this. Let's see how we go. All right, you guys. Let's do it. So we're on the road. We're on the move. This thing does accelerate really well. For something that is a CBT license, you're surprised. At least I'm surprised. Easily getting up to 30. Now, an issue that I've sort of picked up on and some other people have picked up on as well, is the throttle on this is absolutely bizarre in that it's pretty much on or off. You don't get a full spectrum of speeds. So I've just found it. There is a sweet spot on this which basically holds your speed, but it's what, about a three degree angle? So it's very, very difficult to get it. Um, you end up sort of just doing this off and on thing where you go, oh, Ooh. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. You kind of have to adjust your riding style to it. So to just have a bit more room for setting your speed, I'd be a big fan. If it, you know, if it was a 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% throttle, there wouldn't be an issue. But like you can see, I'm lurching around. Um, and this is me doing my absolute best to keep it steady. Whoa. As you go over bumps and things like that, you can knock the throttle very easily and it just propels you forwards. So the switch gear on this, I think it's quite nicely positioned and balanced. You've obviously got your reverse gear there, you've got your automatic lights there. So that's sort of dim and full dim based on your environment, so daytime, nighttime. Uh, you've got your hazard lights, which is a nice feature on a 125, you don't see that that much. I say a 125, a 125 class capacity bike, CBT allowance. I'm a big fan of just having full safety switch gear like that. It adds a, it makes a difference in my opinion. So the brakes on this is regenerative braking. Combined braking system, pull that rear brake, it's going to give you a bit of front. So we are flying, this is mode 2, on a slight incline uphill, doing 45 miles an hour. A lot of people have complained about the speed of this, saying they couldn't even get it to 50. Um, but we're in mode 2 and we're doing 45, so I'm, I'm not complaining here. As you can probably hear my voice, the suspension on this road in particular, it's a little bit tight. It could be loosened up on that front a bit. It's a fun little ride, it's very fun. You can sort of wiggle about like this. So we've already lost 5% on battery A, 4% on battery B. Oh, it's nerve-wracking watching that percentage go down. So it'd be nice if you kind of had a range, an expected range left on it. Uh, the dash itself, I feel like it's missing a clock. That's just an easy one for me. I feel like you could get away with just shoving a clock on there. Not the end of the world. But it's just a nice little feature. And for three and a half grand, I feel like I should be getting those little features. Let's flick this indicator over. All right. So to switch these indicators off, you just find the middle position again. It's not a button press like some sort of most bikes. It can be a bit fiddly. Hold at 44 here. 88% on battery A, 90% on battery B. We're doing all right, we're doing all right. Make sure my mic is still in, it is. So we're going downhill now and we're not picking up any speed for it. That's all right. Lovely. Suffolk and Norfolk countryside, we're crossing the border soon. So you can see when I pull those brakes it triggers the regenerative braking. It's very interesting. Pulling these brakes. Braking is good, it's, it's definitely adequate. I think we'll do sort of like a couple of emergency stops when we get a bit closer. To be honest we could probably do one up here actually. Alright, I'm going to whack the hazards on. Alright, so we're going to go from 30 miles an hour, 3, 2, 1. Wow. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm impressed. 
So we've lost 15% charge on battery A. I think that makes sense. There we go, Norfolk crossing the border. He does six miles so far, six miles, oh, 6.9 miles, 15%, not bad. So this is obviously aimed at city commuters, city folk. Out here in Norfolk and Suffolk, I don't really see too much of a practical side to this bike. You kind of will find yourself on these roads, these types of national speed limit roads where you're expected to sit at about 50 minimum. It's principle, right? You're on a 60 road, you want to go up about 60. See, a lot of people talk about electric vehicles, or bikes in particular, and going uphill. I haven't really had any issues with that. We're quite confidently sitting at 42 miles an hour here, going uphill. So we lost about 23% charge here. Starting to get nervous now. If we can get back with 60, I'll be happy. I'll be very happy with that. So we've lost 30% there on battery A, 28% on battery B. 12.2 miles, we're nearly there. I quite like these mirrors, they're quite nice, maybe a bit small. I like the angular, sort of sporty look to it, but it definitely could be a just bit bigger. You can see, you can see behind you, don't get me wrong, and obviously making sure you're doing all your lifesavers. 66 and 69%, I'm, I'm trying not to rush myself here, but I equally want to get to work um, and home as well. We're very close now. If we could make it above 60%, I'll be very impressed. We've made it! So 64, 67, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We might make it home, you know. I'm trying to be very conservative with this throttle, but it doesn't make it easy, I tell you that much. I was a little bit optimistic on my journey. I said 15 miles. We're currently sitting at 16, so it looks like my direct route was not so direct after all. Uh, so we're going to make this journey with what looks like 61, 63. Oh, I'm confident. I, I have faith. Whether that faith is going to hold through and actually pay out. All righty, pulling in here. Great success. So, as you can see, 60, 63. I think we're going to make it. 16.7 miles, bloody hell. Steering lock on. Locked up for the day. Let's get up to the office. All right, guys, so it's part two. Finished the day at work. Um, lovely day at the office, as per usual. So, we're just going to whack the key in and see what potential we're at. Yep, exactly where we left it. So 60 and 63. Um, it'll be interesting to see how far we get. <laughs> I think we can get home. I think we can do this. Yep, so that's reverse. Oh my God, it goes back really far. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. We're going to go forwards. Press the first button. There we go. Okay, cool. On the road. Stick in mode two. And I think we'll be all right. I think. I'm going to take the same route back that we did on the way here. Uh, I don't really fancy going any other way. I think it's just better off putting faith in the bike. And it's be a true reflection of this challenge. And going quickly up from what would have been 14 miles to 16. Hey, 32 round trip. Not bad. Guys, so it's so nippy like with these, at these lower speeds. It just sort of, it wants to go. Anyway, right, filter mode. So we've lost 1% on battery A, 2% on battery B. We haven't even left town yet. Thriving right now. I'm not having to sacrifice much speed or time. I can just filter my way through quite happily. Here we go, here we go. Over a bump. Whee. All I can smell right now is exhaust. Part of the pack. Look at me on my little e-scoot. Wait for me. 57, 60%. Right, not the most confidence inspiring, but let's get it. Oh, the suspension, I feel like I could have just, I think I just got some air. So as we go along here, 53, 56, oh. Not sure though. 
at what speed or time I'll get back as the limp mode on this thing is rather punishing. I think when I got into limp mode before I was going about 18 miles an hour. On the quieter back roads won't be a problem but we don't want to be caught on a road like this going 18 miles an hour. It's simply dangerous. Five miles, 49%, 52%, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, is all I can say. Look at that berth, what a, that's wonderful. Oh, seven miles, 43%, we're about halfway. I'm hoping we've got the juice to back this up. So, 12.3, 12.4 miles, 32% on battery A and 36% on battery, 35% on battery B. I just wanted to give a massive shout out to Lexham Insurance. So, Lexham Insurance are what power us here at Bike Matters. If it wasn't for them, none of this would be possible. But they're also doing us a pretty sweet little deal. So, if you click the link up in the top right corner now, you will get £20 off your insurance. Whether it's for a scooter, a motorbike, whatever really floats your boat, just be sure to click that link and get your discount. So here we are, 12.8 miles. We've got about three miles to go, people. We're not far from home now at all. Coming into Birmingham, the home straight, it's in sight. 31%, 34%. Let's see how we do. I'm very, very keen. I think it's gonna do it, you know. And for it to do a 32 mile round trip, bloody brilliant. I think that we're going to do it and I think we're going to be able to very proudly say that on one charge you can do 15 miles to work each way in the countryside on a nice sunny day like this and it's an absolute blast, I've had a great time. Yes the suspension is a little bit firm, yes the brakes could be that little bit better, otherwise this is a bloody great toy. For this price, if you've got the money, why not? Why not? The 50 mile hour speed limit, yeah, could be a problem for some people, but for me, when you look at other A1 electric vehicles, it's really hard to beat. It's really hard to beat. Okay, guys, so I'm feeling a little bit confident here. I'm going to pull over. So we're going to go into mode three. All right, you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Quickly up to 30 there, up to 40 there, pushing right through the 40s, this feels good. After not having this speed today, this feels really good. Uh, 45, 46, 45, 46, 46, 45. It's kind of up and down. I don't think we're going to have much luck. I'm sorry people. I wanted to try it for you, I wanted to see if you could do it. You know what, there's a little hill around here, we'll give it a go on that. We have done it, this little bike has done the 32 mile commute round. I'm interested to see what we get left with, let's give it some whirly, come on! Down the hill, 47! 48! 49! Oh come on, just give me that glorious 5.0! I'm, I'm chuffed, I really am, I'm really impressed. We didn't think it was gonna be able to do it, but to do it, and to not only do it, but do it in style, with 22% and 26% left right now, I am beyond chuffed. We didn't even go into limp mode, Ooh, this is 30, sorry officer. So yeah, as you can see there, 16.2 miles, we'll probably get that up to 16.4, but 16.2 miles, and I've bloody made it home, and I? To have gone into mode three for that last mile and I didn't lose a significant amount of power. It doesn't get much better than that. So yeah, this smashed the commuter challenge. I'm going to be honest, leaving me with 20%. Didn't even go into limp mode. Oh, I really doubted you, Super Miku. I really, Super Miku. I really doubted you, Super Miku. I really did. Um, but for you to demonstrate, you can not only really do it, but do it with a bit of juice left. You're the best. And just like that, we've made it back with 21%, 24%, 16.8 miles. That would have roughly been about the same going to work. So for a 33 and a bit round trip, bloody good job. Hello, Bike Matters fans. Welcome back to the studio. It's Felix here. And yes, the Miku Super 
was successful at getting me to and from work on a single charge. Now, I think the total distance was about 33 and a half miles, which I personally am really impressed with, given that we spent most of our time in mode two and we were even able to creep up into mode three at some point. Didn't get it to that 50 mile an hour mark, but with about 20% battery left, I wasn't expecting to. I think it held its own in around the sort of 40s, mid 40s, but still, to get me to point A, point B, point B to point A, I think it's done a brilliant job. So it's important to recognize this is not a real life scenario by any means. Anyone with their head screwed on properly is gonna probably take their charger to work. But the fact that it managed to do that 33 and a half miles anyway is great. Like no one's gonna be expecting to do that sort of journey to work on this thing particularly, but the fact that it could if you wanted it to is just brilliant. So I think something that's important to give props to here with the Miku Super is the way this thing looks. So we've got this in the red and gray colorway, but it also comes in blue and black, both are really cool looking. I think there's just things you have to give credit to here. You know, this headlight, it just looks great. I really love the depth of this red. The bit under the seat, the gap there, I don't think it's gonna be for everyone, but personally, I think it's really cool. It really makes it unique, and this one really stands apart from the crowd. So like I said to you guys before we left, I'd run through a couple of the app and connectivity features and the little techie features we've got here as well. So something that's really cool, really stands apart to me is the fingerprint ignition switch. Now, I've always wanted one of these. I don't know about you guys, but I thought it'd just be so cool if only I could switch my bike on. And sure enough, you just press this little button here and it will switch on. Now you can press and hold and that'll open up your storage compartment here. That's also where your batteries are kept. And you just press it and let go and it will switch back off. So yeah, it works pretty seamlessly. I'm a big fan. So the app into connectivity here, it's nothing really fancy. You've just got a lock and an unlock. You've got an ignition switch, which is pretty cool. You've also got a storage compartment switch. It's kind of nice. And you've got a mute function, though the mute function doesn't really seem to do much. I don't know if it's just me, but everything still seems to make sounds. <laughs> but it is what it is. So how does the Miku Super actually feel on the road? Well, like I said over and over again, you guys are probably sick of hearing this, but the suspension really needs to loosen up a bit. It's so tight, it was proper bone jarring. Every bump I hit, it felt like I was getting air. Now if that front suspension could just be a bit looser, I really feel like it would improve the ride quality, but otherwise the rear suspension did a pretty damn good job. So the brakes, they did a pretty good job. They held their own. I'm not a fan of the CBS, but I think when we did our emergency stop, I didn't lock up that rear wheel. Nothing really went wrong. And it came to a nice stop, sort of three seconds from 30 miles an hour. So I was quite impressed. But I think the brakes here, they're adequate. There's no real, nothing really special about them, but I think they did an all right job. So like I said to you guys back at home, I'll do a demonstration of how you can remove these batteries. The first thing you need to do is you need to come under the seat here and you need to pop the seat off. Now once you've opened up the seat, you've got two switches here. Now these are your isolated switches, so you're always going to want to flick these off as to stop yourself from coming into any electrical harm. So I'm going to flick that one and flick that one. So now you've flipped off your isolated switches, you come here with the steering in the middle position, you flick that and it will open up your storage compartment. Now further than that, you're going to want to put it all the way around, go beyond your steering lock, there's another click. Once you've done that, you'll be able to remove this little panel. Once that panel is out, you get direct access to your batteries. So that's one battery. And there's my second battery. So when it comes to competitors, I think the Miku sits in a really weird spot. And the reason I say that is because its most direct rival on paper would probably be something like the Niu and QI GTS. They're similar price, similar top speed, and a similar range. Now the main difference there is 100 quid. What's that 100 quid paying for? Well, in my opinion, it looks. This looks like a bike, the new you looks like a scooter. So it's really gonna be up to you. These options are all very similar. You take a step backwards, you go AM, there's many electric options, but this stands apart because it goes 50 miles an hour. It's got a bit more range and it just looks really cool. So is the Miku Super a good bike? Well, now I think this question can be answered by where are you in the world? Here in the countryside, it's not gonna get the use it deserves. You can't get up to your national speed limit speed of 60 miles an hour. You don't quite have the range. The suspension isn't there and out here in the country, it does get bumpy. But if you're in the city, I think it's a really great alternative. You know, it's small, the charging time isn't that big of a deal, it's only four hours. You can do that on your own, you're in the office, even if you're part-time. It's very economical being electric, and I think it's just a really cool, unique thing. So if you've got the money, you live in the city, 
I'd say go for it, but if you don't, this is probably not the bike for you. This is a city commuter, it's built for the city, it's not built for the sticks. I think that question can very easily be answered by where do you live? All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to give us a like. If you've got any comments, put that in the comment section down below. If you've got any comments about the Miku Super or any other electrical alternative, please do let us know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future and ring that notification bell so you don't miss another video. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Peace. Yeah.